just a few random pitch pictures. I'm going to try and show the uh, garden. I was asked by Ethan if I, I could show the garden here. At the moment, the battery on this camcorder thing is virtually run out, so it will probably not last out. Anyhow, that pussycat is Mia, the latest one that I've got. Um, I, she has, and here comes one of her mates. Beautiful pussy cats. As you can see, they're absolutely spot. The black ones are Poppy and Pansy. Had those since uh, kittens. And there's the other one, <coughs> the other black one. Taking it easy on the bed. Three very sport pussy cats. The other one has come up. I don't know. Just a few of the bulbs. Hanging up. <laughs> I say this is just a general video. There are no others, but I thought I'd put that one up. Um, I'm gonna, you'll also notice the light switch, which is not an English one, as you probably guessed. It's an American one, but it's the one with the little neon indicator in it. Originally, these used to be Mercury sweets, sweets which I don't know whether this one is, but um, it's certainly got a little neon in it. She can't keep it out of the picture. One of the tanks of fish. This tank hasn't got many fish in at the moment. We've got a rainbow there. One of the rainbow fish. These come from Australia. Not too many plants in this tank. Um, There's one of the mollies, which is a live bearer. It's a fish that gives live birth. Somewhere we've got a... Oh, I can find it. One of the algae eaters. Hey, the plant that is in here is one which I had a job getting a hold of, and it's a... I find a difficult plant to grow. It's Cryptopodium aponegetifolia. The name aponegetifolia means that it imitates an aponegetum plant, but it's actually a crypt. Cryptopodium aponegetifolia. It's a plant which, once it likes the, the actual conditions, it will grow and oh, this has taken several years to actually establish and hence the reason I haven't messed about too much with this tank because once it's planted you move it you're back to square one and you have to wait another few years for it to establish and also water conditions can cause quite a problem with it as well. Once again, excuse the mess. It's organised chaos round here. 
it's a really sociable house. Some of the old clocks. The old telephone, which I will feature in a video. This is an old American one. And down there is the bell box or the subset which contains the bell. Early telephones didn't have the bell built in. Anyway, excuse the mess. You can see I'm always tinkering about with things. My old favourite there. This is the small one, and now I've got a bigger one of these, you know. Hope I'm not giving any secrets away. That's an American answer phone, which was picked up here from a boot sale in Wimbledon. As were the pictures. Probably recognise where these are, although this is an old one. I must admit, I don't remember New York like that. It's a bit, a bit before my time. That's one, one of the views. This is the Chrysler building, I believe. And next to that, the Flatiron building, which I visited. Very unusual buildings in New York. I hope you don't see the cobwebs. This old lamp I picked up years ago from a shop in Chelsea or near Chelsea in London. That too is American. So the, the walls are oh, on probably hear the, the TV time. on at the and same time. I forgot that was on. Fitting out the, the flats themselves. A few more clocks. And we'll just move on phase by phase, block by block. Why in the so middle of the bull clock, they French, they are, got yeah. electric Absolutely. operated. The, first flats are now the one next to it is also electrically sound, operated. Is, you know, a more modern and clock a, made in Germany. These are just quick views. Unoccupied. I'll probably put these on the total YouTube, YouTube in time. There's another Two picture of the flat iron building. One of the major changes has been to make the walkways or streets in the sky residents only. Don't know whether the TV will come up out. They were used as rat runs by criminal gangs, just one cause of the estate's decline. So yes, so these are the just the one of the, in the sky, one of the defining features of Park Hill. Station that, will actually be closed that's to actually on. Public, but there'll still be, you know, plenty of people coming. Very keen to Here are showing some of the plants. Sense of areas. The sense of area. This is a Kentia palm, or Hoia, as it's now called, named after the islands where they came from. Another large sense of area. Few more sense of areas. Loads of books. I don't make any apologies if you see any cobwebs. One long case clock, a grandfather clock. I got this years ago. Had a bit of back pay at work and I went out and bought that. It's a shop in Kingston. Shop's no longer there. Down Lovely down clock. Floors. I've repaired it once. The other tank, and which is not on at the moment, the, the lights on time as it hasn't come on. Show that another time. I'm not going to let you see everything now, but there'll be nothing for later. Anyway, I'm going to have a little look in the garden. Before the garden, just a few more items, which some of these will probably appear on YouTube. Hopefully they will. I won't say too much about them. Let's have a little look. I'm going to try and get a lot of these things on. Oh, that's safe, by the way. There's nothing in there. 
when you start from nothing in there at all except air. You to really have a, a great vision of how you want the space. You might recognise some so some of these items, which are all already so gone on. Absolutely down to the minute. As I say, I've taken years and years to collect all these things. It seems to match a lot of what you've talked about so far. I would say the greater majority of these have come from boot sales. This was probably a, a, a first acquisition I got when I was in in my late teens. It's a barograph. I got that from a junk shop. But anyway, we'll, I'll put these on more detailed later. And anyway, I'm definitely going down to the garden now. Here we have a few shots of the garden. If it's untidy, it's because I haven't tidied up for a while. Some of these you may have seen before, I don't know. The old dish. I pick up lots of different stations from around Europe. North Africa. Can't quite reach America unfortunately. Some bamboo. I'm going to be very careful not to show all the junk. There's quite a bit of junk at this, this end of the garden. <laughs> just waiting for summer coming out now because it's the sun suddenly come out and it's given me a chance to take a few pictures this is a palm which is a hardy palm over here that's one of the greenhouses some more bamboo in pots oh I'm showing where I get my veggies my groceries from good old Lidl's. I don't know whether you have Lidl's in America, I don't think you do. You've probably got Aldi but uh, not Lidl's yet. You will. It's German firm all, all over Europe. Food's basic and not too expensive. moving down. I don't know how the house is going to show up because the light's shining on, on the camera. That's a cycas, the plant in front, cycad. It's a very pri very primitive form of plant. We've got a, behind those pots we've got a, a species of a puntia which is a cacti. Plants down the front are also species of a puntia. Needless to say I could grow many many more plants if I was in sort of California or so, somewhere like that but I'm not so we have to put up with the ones that will stand a little bit of frost. This is a puntia compressor. Tree ferns these are plants from New Zealand and Australia. They are true fern, tree fern. I have, as I say, I'm pretty sure I have put some some of these on before. Plant in front is a yucca, yucca recurvy folia. It means the leaves fold back, recurved. <coughs> One of the ponds with goldfish in it. A few more apuntias. That one's in the sunshine. It's lovely at the moment. It's quite mild. The wind's a bit cool, but it's not bad. A little bit untidy, but that's the filter box, which is not on, on at the moment. Always provide plenty of air for the fish what the bubbles are. They're just goldfish in here. Inside one of the greenhouses, I know this has appeared before, but I'll put the benefit of the wiring. It's all safe, but some antique equipment there. 
that fuse board came from the continent. Got a little Oh, I can hear them meowing. I wonder who that is. I wonder who that is. Ah, it's my neighbour's my neighbour's pussy cat. Probably come out for some food. Yeah, he'll be shown round the world. What do you think of that? Hey? Hey. Probably hear hear him purring. It's the one I call Gingy. That's not his real name. But I can never remember his real name. Once again, please excuse any mess you see. Winter time is not my sort of happy time. But they've got some some of the plants there. They're virtually at rest now. This is just a general shot. Got a nice old fan there. I know a lot of you collect fans and that. This is it's not it's not an old one. It's a buyer now. We've got the seedlings coming up. The old grow light. There's a big one. <laughs> yeah, that is not the biggest they make. There's actually two lamps in one. One's a warm white and the other's uh, more or less a daylight. Shows a bit of sun. I don't know if you can see those going around. They're the old crooks. Um, what they call them. They rely on the the light to actually drive the little veins round. I see those, the boot cell, I'll pick them up. But if the inner tubes are broken, they're no good air's got into them. There's old Gingy again. And this little device is very, very good. I use that for carting plants about, shopping, you name it, it goes in there. It's an American um, a fly, radio flyer. I had to paint it because it became rusty. But they are very good those. That was obviously brought over by someone. But they are very good. Let's wander down the garden. Have a look. Oh, look out. Got them. The old cat nearly tripped me over. We've got another pond here with some large fish. There's a couple of koi in here, but nothing to sort of shout home about. You may be able to see them just. The fish are not particularly active at this time. Winter time, they tend to go to rest. As I say, no, that's, that's the, one of the fair filters just on top. To so take the filters out in winter time, because of the the cold, if they froze, they would just crack. They're netted to keep the birds from pinching the fish or the cats from having a go at them. I say, he's not going to let me go, is he? I think he probably wants a handful of food. Right, let's move on. Excuse the mess. A few more plants, bamboos. Another yucca. Behind we have a little bit of junk, unfortunately. As I say, I never prepare my videos. You see them as as I take them. So if there's the odd bit of paper about, please excuse. There's a 12 volt accumulator. This is for the 12 volt in the shed kept outside for safety reasons. Got some more plants. This one hasn't been cut down by the frost yet and I'm hoping it's not going to. It has been pretty mild over, over here so far. 
one of the other greenhouses we'll just have a quick look I'm not going to go into any detail just pointing out there various things some heaters down there that orange things is in fact a Chinese heater got another fan I find fans are essential during the hot summer months to keep the air circulating in the greenhouse we've got another antique fuse box up there I think that one came from Belgium emergency light not that we normally need it over here that red thing's a digital clock another little neon light there which is quite an old one it just indicates that the power's still on a few of the plants plant on the back so euphorbia euphorbia obesa various other bits and bobs mm. come on you, you're coming out I don't want to lock I don't want to close him in the greenhouse various sheds we won't go in here today we'll save that for another day have a peek through through the window A wee bit untidy in there. Look at the back. You may just see that variac that I picked up. I don't know if it shows. Yeah, excuse the mess. Some more plants that would probably be more at home in Southern California. A Puntias, a Crashler at the back, Crashler Argentia. A very old, well I say very old, that is a black heat. It has a heating element in it but never gets red, it just remains non-red, it just gets hot. There's a Puntia, Puntia Robusta. few very quick ones now because the battery is getting very low. This is the, the latest greenhouse which I'll just look through the door because Gingy's outside and he'll be in here. Anyhow, show you the old car. There's the old motor car. I've covered the license number up, registration number up. I think it's always wise to sort of certain things to cover up. It is mine, it is it's all legally mine. Um, it's a Kia Sedona. I think it's got another name in America, but there we are. It works out to give you an idea of how much the price of diesel is now. It's about six pounds or more a gallon. The price of fuel is rocketed over here. I know in America it's nowhere near as dear as that. But here it's blooming expensive. And if all the trouble in the Middle East gets any worse, it'll probably go even dearer. And there's a few more of the greenhouses. Just wander down there, have a little look. This one will be for bringing seedlings on. I might put some nice tomato plants in there. Once again, excuse the mess. The other greenhouse is junk. Well, when I say junk, it's stuff 
before uh, going out to boot sales. Yeah, I do the occasional boot sale. Most uninteresting stuff. Another Lidl's bag. And the next greenhouse is also full of bits and bobs. As you can see, lots of stuff for the, the boot cells. That more or less completes the little tour around. The other side of the car, I don't want to, just, I don't want to show the registration number. It's all legitimate, it's just that, you know, it's, it's... That's the end of the greenhouse. A couple of gas bottles. And old Gingy's still about. Here we've got a couple of um, smaller ponds. There's nothing in these ones. It's got a nice crop of Ludwigia. I think that's Ludwigia palustris. In the winter, if it gets frosted, it, it gets killed and it just dies back into the water. But it's a good, well, I say a good oxygenating plant. It's fair, it's not perfect. But for indoor aquariums, it's not very suitable. It grows best outdoors. Anyhow, that about concludes this little trip for this time. We'll do another one a bit later when there's been some changes in, in the garden. And more plants have probably grown up a bit. And I'll take a walk back indoors because there may be a nice cup of tea waiting for me. I don't know, there might be. Plant in front an aspidestra, a very hardy plant. got another dish. Both dishes are on rotators to pick in to pick up different satellites. But the garden's sad now. It's no plants much getting through through the winter. Anyhow, thanks for looking. Any comments please make. Any questions please ask. And thank you for looking. About seven seconds left on the camera, so I'll clear down now. Thank you for watching.